What's up, y'all? This is Preston Perry. I want to just address a couple of things. I released a poem called New World Christian, and I've been blessed so far by all the emails, all the IG inboxes, by all the Facebook inboxes um, of how people were convicted by it, encouraged by it, challenged by it. Um, some people, you know, said they didn't like it very respectfully, and some people said they didn't like it very disrespectfully. <laughs> but it's all good. I still love y'all. But I want to just take this time to address why I wrote the poem New World Christian, answer some questions that y'all have, and yeah, man, just kind of give you deeper insight of why I wrote the poem New World Christian. To the Christian, there is nothing wrong with being woke. In fact, I believe when we care about injustice, heaven smiles with the grin of a thousand horizons. The angels begin to dance in daylight joy, singing with their whole bodies, a right now praise, thankful that we are evidence that God is a just God. I wrote the poem New World Christian because around a year and a half ago, I started to have a very intriguing and interesting conversations with a lot of people on the road at shows, um, people writing me, inboxing me about their experience with the American church, the American experience. I think that mainly for African Americans who do church in America, uh, when all of the videos of young black men and women shot by the police started to surface, I think that it developed a lot of distrust in the hearts of a lot of people. When we see what's going on on CNN, when we see Trayvon Martin um, getting killed, or when we see Mike Brown, or when we see Sandra Bland or Tamir Rice, and then when we go to church and worship with our white brothers and sisters, let's not address how we, how we wanted it to be addressed. And I began to see a pattern of just people being frustrated, people being confused about why are we worshiping with people who do not identify with our uh, experience um, as an African American in this country. So from there, I began to just pray and ask the Lord, like, Lord, can you give me something um, to give to your people um, concerning this? Because not only did I see it, see it as a problem or, or see Satan using it, to his advantage, but I also identify with it because their struggles were my struggles. I've also struggled with these these questions. I've also, you know, talked about uh, even in my poem when I said, you know, when Sandra Bland's body mysteriously was beat into a ghost in jail, it made me look at white people with the side eye for a minute too. You know, my flesh rose like an angry revolution and begged me to cling to my people like we all we got. Like, and that was a real line because at a particular time I was like looking at white people like, man, like, are you really for me? You know? And I had to take it to the Lord in prayer and I had to ask the Lord to help me. Um, and after he helped me, I believe that he began to give me things to help others. And I don't think that the New World Christian poem was an answer to every single question. People who said, you know, you left out this, you left out that. The truth is, I left out a lot of things. But um, I wanted to write the poem because I wanted a conversation to be started, a healthy conversation to be started, predominantly amongst African Americans to examine our hearts, to fight for justice, but also make sure that we're walking in love in the process. So that was my heart behind writing New World Christian. If we think he won't bring justice for Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Sean Bell, and all the other brown bodies America did not sing the national anthem for, maybe we should stop studying our history just for a moment and scan the scriptures for his resume. Ain't no way God don't see us when he sits on the throne that high. So in the poem, I had a, I had a line that said, um, maybe we should stop studying our history just for a moment and scan the scriptures for his resume. And some people had a problem with me saying that. You know, a couple of people asked me, what did I mean by the line? Some people just went in on me about like, what do you mean we should stop studying our history? And what I was trying to communicate was by saying, maybe we should stop studying our history just for a moment. I was trying to communicate that there's nothing wrong with studying our history. I think that it's a lot of benefits in knowing where we came from, knowing who we are as a people and knowing our history. But when we allow our history to make us grow in this bitterness or this hatred towards another people group, I think that's when it's a problem. I think studying our history and not balancing it with the word of God 
and reminding ourselves that he is sovereign, that he is loving, that he is not a God of, of, of oppression. Some can study the history only and start to kind of think that, man, maybe God isn't a God of black people, or maybe God isn't a, a God of the oppressed. Maybe God does love the oppressor more. And I think the dangers of that is falling into that, that pit where Satan begins to tell us, Maybe God doesn't like black people like I thought he did. Because as I'm studying the history of black people through slavery, through the Jim Crow South, through the Black Lives Matter movement today, where people are black people are continually dying by the hands of cops and keep getting acquitted, maybe he doesn't like black people. Um, so my heart was to express that we cannot study our history only uh, and not accompany it with the word of God to, to remind us that God is still sovereign and that he loves black people because he created us in his image as well. Speak to our slave ancestors who risked their limbs sneaking away in the black of midnight to teach each other the scriptures and context. They didn't try to become their own God to fight against oppression, but trusted the mighty hand of God to do the fighting for them. A lot of people ask me, why would you say slaves can fight against oppression? What about the Harriet Tubmans and the Frederick Douglasses and people of this nature? What I wasn't trying to communicate was that slaves did not fight against oppression. And what I also wasn't trying to communicate was by them fighting against injustice was them trying to become their own God. But what I was trying to communicate to slaves who were Christian did not try to become their own God to fight against oppression. And it's a difference. You might ask, what is the difference? I think the difference is that even today, God is calling us to not try to replace him as God to try to defeat our oppressors, but to trust that he himself will give us the strength to defeat our oppressors. I was saying that the slaves, they didn't try to become their own God, but they trusted in God to do the fighting for them. This is not be saying that they didn't fight against the oppression or didn't fight against injustice period but what i was trying to communicate was they trusted in the higher power which was the lord jesus christ to give them strength in the midst of their struggle in the midst of their fight in the midst of their battle and i think that we as christians can do the same did you know christ is a woke jew from galilee who hated racism with all of his deity but loved the fire and brimstone out of racist men racist men who couldn't see past his brown skin to worship him as god what i meant was um, if you look at the life of Christ, Jesus came to an imperfect world to redeem us from sin, um, but he also came here so that the, the perfect wrath of God can be vindicated. So he came here to be just, to give sin and, and, and depravity what it deserved, which was death. But at the same time, he displayed his love to us by not allowing us to pay for our own sin, but paying for the penalty of sin for us. And I think that he displays the right balance and the perfect balance of being just and being loving by coming to the earth to die for sinners so that sin can be paid for and also so that we can have eternal life. He paid for sin while extending grace. And I think when we, when we think about being woke and being loving, we have to look at the example of Christ. I think the, one of the wrong ways we can look at being woke is saying that, oh, if my right brothers and sisters don't want to acknowledge my pain, which let's be honest, a lot, a lot of our white brothers and sisters in the, the church, they, 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 don't, they don't acknowledge our pain. I think one way we can walk in godlessness in this is cutting our brothers and sisters off in the faith because they don't respond to us and they don't love us the way we feel like we should be loved uh, when Christ didn't do that, do that for us. He still bears with us. He still has long suffering with us. And he still came to the earth um, and died for people who did not deserve it. And I think that, uh, is it true that a lot of our white brothers and sisters or our Asian brothers and sisters or whoever don't accept us for who we are or don't acknowledge our pain is that true yeah but is it uh, a godly thing to cut them off or to say that they're the enemy uh, because of it no it is not so i think the main way we could walk in balance is looking at the way christ came to die for sinners 
um, to bring justice, but also to extend grace. The day is coming when Jesus will come and swoon over the true woke Christian in all white and rescue him from all injustice. And on that day, we will complete the old Negro spiritual song of our ancestors when they look towards the hills and saying, we shall overcome. And we will be glad we did. Like the child who waited patiently for the storm to pass to play beneath the sun. And the woke Christian, tired but yet righteous, will finally get his chance to rest in the sovereignty of his Savior. Lastly, just to close this up, I do not think it's anything wrong with being woke. I think that if you are woke, it is a righteous thing if you balance it with the word of God. I think God is calling all those to care about injustice. I think God is calling all those to care about people who are mistreated everywhere, not just black people, not just white people, not just Korean people, not just Asian people, but all people. God cares when we care about the ones who are looked down upon, who are treated wrongly, right? This is God's heart, but I don't think that we can grow in hatred in our fight for justice. That was the point of the poem. I hope I communicated it in the poem, and I pray that um, it blessed you. Getting the phone call. <laughs> Hello?